Hi, I'm Timothy Lindsdow, a video producer and a Christian and a creationist. I'm used to the constant argument between evolution and creation. And uh, today I want to talk about the dazzlingly amazing hagfish. Now what would be dazzling and amazing about a hagfish? Well, it has to do with their fossils that they're finding. They have discovered that they found slime residue in that fossil. And that's what's amazing when you, they're saying that this fossil is 100 million years old. The hang, hagfish are, shall we say, a little creepy. <laughs> they hang around in the bottom. And they, they have no spines. They can tie themselves in a figure eight and they gobble up dead stuff on the bottom of the ocean. So they're basically the vacuum cleaners of the ocean. But if you ever grabbed a hold of one, you'd be slimed by enormous amounts of slime because it's, it's a uh, uh, deterrent for them against predators. And they have these unique slime glands positioned along the sides of their long, slender bodies. And uh, it's a, a slime making proteins that show up. And what they do is that the slime can fill the gills of a predator and cause it a whole bunch of trouble. Now, of course, uh, the evolutionists are uh, taking a look at this and saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do we do with this? Because there's still evidence of this of, of uh, the slime residue in this fossil. How could it be 100 million years old? So uh, the University of Chicago published uh, something on this and uh, they managed to sandwich the fossil's chemical details between long discussions of where it should be placed in the evolutionary diagrams of supposed, uh, supposed related, relatedness. In other words, how did the slime fish become human? Ooh, that's a creepy idea. Now, Darwinists love to hunt for top, bottom, I should say, bottom to top progression in fossils, especially ones showing initially no background and eventually turns into one. Well, the, uh, 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 the tale to follow amid speculations is that role hagfish should play in evolution's imaginary relationships lay little chemical remnants that carry a big message and that that's that evidence of the slime unfortunately for evolutionary time hagfish pop into the fossil record looking exactly like today's hagfish there it goes again this happens over and over they find these uh, fossils and they look exactly the same as they do now showing no evolution now, I made this point before that if you're going to have something evolve from a hagfish into a, something that walks on land, you have to have incredible numbers of, of uh, transitional fossils, and they're not finding that. Now, why wouldn't they be finding that? Well, that's because as a creationist, and all the evidence I see is everything was created in a very short time. And the Bible says a week. The power of, the, of God, the ruler of the universe, it's not a problem for him to speak things like that into existence because of his all-knowing being, the ability to do that. And I know that's what drives some people nuts, but that's the way I see it and the way it the evidence shows with the lack of transitional fossils. I mean, there has to be millions of such things and they don't show up. Uh, one, they, when they worked their way through this fossil, they identified slime glands, intestine, heart, cartilage, cartilage remnants in the fossil. Uh, these are decay-prone soft tissues that, that should be... Uh, you know, eliminated, should be totally decimated, but they showed up. Now, what that means is rapid burial, rapid burial for this evidence to 
uh, exist in a fossil, and they've shown up in dinosaur fossils now with with actual uh, flesh particles within them. So it has to be a rapid burial, and there's only one thing that could do that much burial worldwide, and that would have been the Great Flood, the Flood of Noah. Very, very dramatic, very catastrophic, uh, huge, massive tidal waves ripping across the continents, tearing up layers of uh, animals and, and earth and laying them out in layers, which you can easily see in Grand Canyon and other places. You can see those layers. One thing to look for is you won't see any uh, erosion in the layer in between. Now, how could that happen if it wasn't all at once? Well, uh, now the, the layer they found this in again is 100 million years, but how could anything uh, any of these materials last that long? Well, the evidence shows that it wouldn't. Uh, the science shows that it wouldn't, but the evidence shows that it, it uh, happened very quickly. So a recent worldwide watery catastrophe should be considered when you see these fresh looks, if you will, of these fossils. The stability of a hagfish body forms found in both uh, fossils and oceans, plus the original tissue and slime remnants that make up this hagfish fossil stand in the way of this old age assignment. Now you must understand the old age assignment comes from Darwinian evolution because to believe that a, uh, a, a bottom to top uh, evolution where different species become evolved into different species, you're going to have to have a very, very long time to make that work. And it's only a theory that it would work. Because there's nothing today that shows that things move from kind to kind. You know, that, there's nothing that shows that cats are evolving into horses or anything of that sort. You'd, and Science is about evidence, about finding evidence of such things and not finding those transitional fossils. And now they're finding more fossils with uh, uh, substance in them that should have long disappeared, and it hasn't. So this argument goes on and on and on, and this latest hagfish. Those things are creepy, man. <laughs> but, you know... Something had to be made to clean up the ocean bottom, and uh, that seems to work. But, uh, you know, all things can't be uh, beautiful in our eyes, so, uh, you know, God's very creative and uh, likes a lot of different things, and uh, those are pretty wild. <laughs> it's really crazy that what you have is evidence of the actual material that, that the hagfish uses to fend itself still existing in this fossil. I know I'm getting repetitious, but that's, that's what's happened. It's trying to help you think a different way about fossils in evolution, that the evidence just does not show up in these hagfish fossils. Uh, is showing that that transitional evidence is just not there. So... Think about, uh, I picked up this uh, uh, article from Institution of Creation Research, icr.org, icr.org. Check it out. Challenge them. Challenge them on, your, you know, on an evolutionary question. They, they'd love to have that challenge. I know they would. And uh, challenge yourself. Don't you remember years ago it was all about questioning the man, you know? questioning authority do that you know the, the academic authority right now is evolution it once was creation so uh, since there's no real evidence challenge them you know you're the ones that seem the evolutionists seem to have the cards right now they have the the uh, uh, they have the inquisition power now to control the argument but uh, we're going to keep bringing back these 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 evidences that show that there's no transition 
Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm Timothy Linsdow. Like and comment on my video. I know you evolutionists are ready to tear this apart. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Bye now.